Hello, Nick Jones here and welcome along to a hit session at the Lakeside Fitness Studio. Before you get started, please read the disclaimer in the description box below. And as always, if you are enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps me. Like, comment, share, whatever. Apart from that, let's get to it. So we're just gonna start the warm up with some swinging of the arms side to side. Some active stretches to start with. Then we're going to slowly lift the heart rate as the warm-up goes on. Now forwards and backwards with the arms, so arms nice and straight. And just kind of like marching arms. Now a warm-up for the rotator cuff, arms out straight to your side, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up, thumbs down. Just switch them over. Then we're going to warm up the tricep, marching arms, but touch the back of your neck each time. This makes you bend your elbow and warm up the tricep and bicep. Next up, just some torso twists. So just twisting your shoulders and upper body in relation to your hips. This is warming up the back. Let's go. Okay, now little jog. Then knee up towards the chest and then just hold it for a second and then switch the sides. Little jog, hold the knee. Little jog, hold the other knee. Again, we're just slowly going to lift the heart rate now. Halfway there. Okay, so now up. So open the gate. So knee up towards your chest, then circle round, then hit a little squat, then do the other leg. Just warming up the hips and slowly starting to get that heart rate up. In a sec, we're going to switch directions. So we're going to go around the gate now. So start out wide and then bring it to the center of your body and then hit the squat in between each leg. Let's go. Active stretches just gets every body part moving. Now next up, we're going to do some walk out. So from toes, then walk down onto the floor, kind of out into press up position, walk back in, then hands up towards the ceiling or sky in my case. As I'm doing the workout outside. Halfway right there. now, reverse lunge with a little twist. Okay, so just a gentle reverse lunge, don't have to go too deep. And then if your left leg's forward, left twist. If your right leg's forward, right twist. Ten seconds. Just this and some jumping jacks to go. And then we're going to be nice and warm, ready to go. So just a few jumping jacks, 10 seconds. Rest. And that's it, finish there. Now let's get ready to start the hip workout. So our first move is going to be push-up retractions. It's like a normal push-up, but where your chest goes all the way down onto the floor, and then you just lift your hands off the floor at the bottom, then push back up. Make sure your bum stays up nice and high as you push back up off the floor. As an easier option, do it from knees, same procedure. Or if that's still too difficult, don't go quite as deep, don't go quite down and touch the floor, and don't worry about the retraction. Apart from that, try and get as many reps in the time as you can. Again, anyone can coast these hip workouts and make them fairly comfortable, but it's up to you to make it difficult. The harder you push yourself, the more results you'll get. 10 seconds. Lastly, we are gonna be following the timer. 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. For the timing, I do use an app called SmartWad. It's free and super simple to use. 45 seconds done, rest there. Next move is gonna be our lat pull down skydiver. You're gonna roll your towel up. You're gonna try and pull it apart. Then you're gonna try and get your thighs and your chest in the air. Start with your arms nice and straight, and then just pull the towel down towards your chin. Squeeze your lats on the side of your back, and then slowly move out back up to the top. So, so pull down, squeeze the lats, then straighten the arms. Try and stay in the air the whole time if you can, but to make it easier, just do as many reps as you can at a time, then go down onto the floor, take a break, and then go back in. Again, try and push it as hard as you can. We're starting with two power moves to slowly lift the heart rate before we get into the real heart rate lifting exercises. 10 seconds. 
That's it, try and stay up the whole time if you can. Hang on as long as you can. Three, two, rest. one, rest. 15 seconds rest. Our next move, you're gonna move the mat. We're gonna do our bunny hops. It's where you squat down nice and deep, jump with a little heel kicker in the middle. If that's too difficult, don't do the heel kicker. If that's still too that's difficult, or you don't want any impact on your knees, just do your normal body weight squat. I'll demonstrate the options as we go. So there's the easiest. And then there's the middle one, just with the straight jump. If you're doing these right, these should really get your legs and jack your heart rate up. This heel kicker squat is super tough. Just make sure your chest is staying up nice and tall as you're bending your legs. You don't want to be tipping forward from the hips and not bending at the knee. You want to bend those knees, activate those legs, keep the chest up tall so you're not using your lower back. 10 seconds. But again, it's only as hard as you make it. You can coast the workout if you like, or if you want the most out of it, really push it. Rest. Next up is gonna be our pistol squats. These are quite tricky. I'm still getting used to them myself. You will need a box or a step or a chair or something. To make it easier, the higher the chair. To make it harder, the lower the chair. So you can go squat down one leg at a time, keeping one leg out straight in front of you. I'm demonstrating a bit of an easier option to start with where you completely sit down on whatever you're going down towards. But if it is too difficult, just hit your normal body weight squats and just try and get as many in the time as you can. If not, this is the harder option now where you just lightly touch the box Keep all the weight in that heel still. Halfway These really there. get the glutes and really work the legs. And then just find the rhythm, then try and go as fast as you can whilst maintaining good form. 10 seconds. Rest. So rest there. Next up, we're gonna get that heart rate up as high as we can with some mountain climbers. You're gonna go down into press up position, then you're gonna do a high knee sprint from the press up position. To make it as hard as possible, go as fast as you can with only light touches at the back as if you are doing a high knee sprint like I'm doing. Or if not, feel free to slow it down a little bit if you are struggling and kind of step it out. Apart from that, go as fast as you can. Try and get as many steps in the time as you can whilst keeping the hips and shoulders in a nice straight line. You don't want the hips Halfway above there. the shoulders and you don't want them below the shoulders. This is a move, it's super simple, super easy to do. It's now just a case of how hard can you push yourself? How high can you get that heart rate? rest there so i like to balance the physique so we've done a kind of move for the pushing muscles now we're going to do a move for the back muscles you're going to lie down all the way on your front arms and legs nice and straight and then you're going to swim opposite arm opposite leg keeping everything in the air if you can okay so keep the chest and the thighs in the air if you can and then just swim the arms and legs like so if that is just too difficult feel free to slow it down i'll demonstrate the option where you're just going Opposite arm, opposite leg, opposite arm, opposite leg. Here is the easier option. Or if you've got any lower back problems and you're feeling it's really difficult, this one, maybe just stick with this easier option or don't do it at all. But this is a really difficult one. You're working every muscle on the back of the body, the hamstrings, the glutes, the lower back, the upper back, the rear of the shoulders. It's a really good one. And a good one for posture, long term. Rest there. Next up, we're going to do our reverse lunge jumps. So you're going to have one leg out in front, whilst the other leg steps backwards, nice and Let's deep. Go. Get the rear knee as near to the ground as you can. Then as you bring the knee through, bring the knee all the way through and jump at the top, staying on the same leg. So my left leg staying forward, right leg is going backwards down and then up with a jump. If that is too difficult for you, Feel free to just do the step without the jump. This one is a bit of a tricky one in terms of balance. Just make sure you keep your eyes in one place and make sure that front knee doesn't go up in front of the tongue of your shoelaces. 10 seconds. Rest. 
So that one's a nice tough one, really gets into the glutes and into the legs and lifts the heart rate. We're now just gonna switch the sides. So remember, knee doesn't travel over the tongue of your shoe. Nice big step backwards, get that knee as near to the ground at the back as you can, and then push it through up with a jump. Remember, ignore the jump if you're struggling with it. But if you're not, find a rhythm and then slowly try and pick the pace up. The more you can get in the time, the better, but make sure that rear knee is almost scraping the floor. Halfway there. seconds. Rest. Okay, so rest there. Next up, we're going to do a final cardio move which involves all of the body, the upper body and the lower body. It's the squat thrust. So press up position, then you're going to jump both legs in all the way up as near to your chest as you can and then jump the legs all the way back into press up position. This one is a super tricky one, really gets the heart rate up as we're using all of the muscles in the body. And remember, if you're finding it too difficult, just slow it right down or kind of step it in and out and back. Apart from that, if you're finding it okay, just go as fast as you can, get as many reps in the time as you can, but just notice how far in and how far out I'm jumping each time. That's the key to finding this one hard. If you just do small jumps, Ten you won't find it too bad. And just push all the way through to the end of the first round. So lap one done into lap two. We're gonna repeat those exercises. So we're going to go back to the push-up retraction where you go down all the way down onto the floor, lift your hands off the floor and push yourself back up. Again, do it from knees if it's too difficult from toes or if you feel like your bum's dropping as you're pushing yourself up or don't go too far down at all. Like I'm demonstrating there, just do your normal push-ups as good as you can either from toes or from knees. Halfway there. With the last move in mind though, it's quite good to do the retraction so the wrists get a little bit of a break. And now just try and get as many reps in the time as you can. Can you beat yourself on the first round? So you almost want to be counting your reps each round now and seeing if you can beat them each time. Rest. Or at least match them. Rest there. Next up, the lat pull down with the towel. So you're gonna get your thighs and your chest into the air, everything out nice and straight. That's Hold good. yourself up in the air as long as you can, and slowly pull that towel down towards your chin. Squeeze the muscles on the side of the back, and then slowly extend back out. If you can, try and stay in the air for the whole 45 seconds. If not, do as many reps as you can at a time, and then rest. This is a good one to include in a hit circuit because there's lots of press ups and mountain climbers in a kind of hit style session. So it's good to work the muscles on the back of the body. Also, it's not the most comfortable position to be in. So it's hard to kind of breathe seconds. in this position, which keeps that heart rate up and keeps that calorie burn up. Rest. Rest there. Next up, we're going into those bunny hops where you squat down as deep as you can, jump with a little heel kicker in the middle. You can ignore the heel kicker if you're finding it too tough and just do a straight up and down jump, or just do your normal body weight squat if that's too difficult as well, like that. So then, or just the straight up and down jump. But the trick is you wanna keep that chest up nice and tall, make sure the bum's going backwards and down. So you're sticking that bum out as you go down, keeping the chest tall. So you're bending at the knee, not bending at the hips and just using your lower back. But to make it as hard as possible, go as fast as you can, go as deep as you can into the squat and as high as you can on the jump at the top.
rest there. Next up, the pistol squats, the one-legged squats. So keep one leg straight as you squat down. Use a chair or a step of some kind. I'm demonstrating where you can sit all the way back to start with and take the weight off the leg at the bottom or hit your normal body weight squat if they're too difficult or to make them as tough as possible, do what I'm about to do next. The light touch of the chair and then straight back up, making sure you don't lose the weight in your foot. And then just find a rhythm with them and then slowly try and pick the pace up and do as many as you can in the time. Also, the higher the chair, the easier it is. The lower the chair or step or table, the harder. Next. Next up, those mountain climbers. A super simple, super effective way to get the heart rate up. You're holding the press up position and then doing a high knee sprint from that position. To make it harder, go faster. To make it easier, step in and step out and slow it right down. However, just push yourself as hard as you can possibly go. Remember, keep the bum in line with the shoulders. Don't let the hips drop too low below the shoulders and don't have them too high either. Halfway you should there. be bouncing off the toes at the bottom position if you can, but if not, just step it out. And go as fast as you can. Get as many reps in the time as you can. Up to you. Okay, so next up, time to balance out the physique. We're working all of the muscles on the back of the body with that lower back swimmer. Onto your front, arms and legs nice and straight. Try and get your thighs and your chest into the air. And then just swim, opposite arm, opposite leg. Bit of a strange one, this one, but it certainly works. Works every muscle on the back of the body. Really good for the posture and good to balance out the press-ups of the mountain climbers. Do as long as you can at a time and then break or do this easier option that I'm demonstrating now. Okay, here we go. Now into those reverse lunge jumps. So take a large step backwards, keeping one leg forward. Get that back knee as near to the ground as you can. As, as you bring that knee through, up and jump. Ignore the jump if you're finding it too difficult. And if you're finding it too difficult still, don't go quite as deep into the lunge. But the deeper you go into the lunge, the more you're gonna work those muscles, the more you're gonna tone them, shape them, get the heart rate up. And the higher you go with the jump, the same thing too. Find a nice rhythm with them and then start to build the pace. So there's the easier option, but now just find a rhythm and go as fast as you can on them. Keeping your balance, keep your eyes in one place. And just make sure that front knee doesn't go over the tongue of your shoe. This one should really be getting your leg. If not, Ask yourself, can you go deeper? Can you go higher? Can you go faster? Next, we're just gonna switch the leg. So we're staying on one leg at a time. Let's go. This time I've got right leg forward, left leg going in, out and up and jump. That's it, do it with a jump as long as you can. And if not, step it out with the easier version. Just do what you can for how long. Halfway there. Ten seconds.
Okay, so resting there. Next up, that total body move, the squat thrust to finish the second round. Press up position, then jump both legs in as high as you can. Jump both legs back out. So in, out, in, out, fast as you can, as high as you can, and as far back as you can. So at the back position, you almost want to be in press up position. Don't let those hips drop too low below the shoulders. If you are feeling it in your back at all, don't jump back quite as far. Keeping that bum in line with the shoulders. I'm making this as hard as possible by trying to jump up as high as I can, trying to get my feet as near to my hands as I can, my knees as near to my chest as I can each time. If you're just doing small jumps in and out, it's going to be much easier. Now just go, 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 go to the end of the second round. All the way through, push, 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 and finish there. Now it's time for abs. Just giving you an extra 15 seconds rest this, uh, in between the uh, cardio round and the abs. So we've had 30 seconds in total and then we're going to get started with the abs. Four moves, two times through. We're going to stick with fairly high energy ab moves to keep the heart rate up and keep the calorie burn going. To start with, you're going to be on your side, one arm out at a 90 degree angle. To stabilize the body in the position I'm in at the moment, then stretch all the way out, crunch all the way up nice and high. At the top of the move, you want as little of your body touching the floor as you can. This is an option here where you can bend the legs in if keeping your legs straight is too difficult. If you feel it in your neck at all, look at your grounded hand. Try and get as much of your body up into the air. Nice big pause, big squeeze. So you want at least a second or so of pause, squeeze at the top. Notice there's a moment, there's a split second where I'm not moving at the top. That's where I'm pausing, seconds. squeezing, contracting the abs. This is more a move for the obliques, the muscles on the side of the abs. And it's still a fairly high energy move. It's going to keep your heart rate up. It's going to keep that calorie burn going. Now just switch the sides. You can just roll over onto the other side if you like, but I thought I'd switch that way so you could still see me and see what I'm doing with the arm. So one arm out to stabilize at a 90 degree angle, stretch all the way out, crunch all the way up nice and high. Nice big pause, big squeeze at the top. If not, bend the legs in if the straight legs is too hard. But that's it, we're looking to get as much of the other. So notice it's only my hip touching the floor at the top of the position of the top of the move. Halfway there. Big pauses, big squeezes. Ten seconds. Okay, so now into the next move where you're going to lie out nice and straight, arms straight above your head, legs bent at a 45 degree angle, both touching the floor, and you're going to do some single leg holds. So you're going to stretch yourself out, crunch up, hold on to one leg for a second or two, back down. Make sure your shoulder blades are coming up off the ground as you hold on to that leg to get that crunch, but you only want to gently hold on to the leg. It's more to make sure we're not using too much hip flexors, and so you can pause, squeeze, flex your abs. Again, it's worth considering with the ab round, it's not like the hit round, where you're just trying to kind of survive each move. What we're trying to do is we're actively trying to work our abs as hard as possible. It's not about looking good and just looking at how well you can survive each round. It's about how hard can you make each contraction of your abs. Next up, we're going to do a harder version of that. So we're going to go both legs straight up into the air, both arms straight up into the air. Then you're going to drop three quarters of your limbs at a time. So you're going to drop one leg as you drop both arms, come back up, reach for your toes. Then drop the other leg as you drop the arms, reach for the toes. It's a bit of an awkward one, this one to start with. But once you get the hang of it, it's a very good one because you're keeping one leg straight in the air, which plants your back into the floor, but then you're dropping one leg, which increases the contraction in the crunch at the top. Reach up as high as you can at the top position, try and get as near to those toes as you can. 
Watching this back, I didn't actually keep my legs as straight as I, I thought I was. But your whole idea is to keep your legs as straight as you can at the top position and just drop one leg at a time as you stretch the abs out. If you get confused with this move, start with everything at the top, then drop three quarters of your limbs. Rest there, back to the start, back to the side V sit for lap number two. One arm out to stabilize, 90 degree angle, other arm stretches right out, legs stay nice and straight, then reach everything up and reach for the toes. Try and get as much of your body off the floor as you can. Big pause, big squeeze at the top. If that's too difficult, bend the legs in round towards the chest. Try not to keep them straight. But if you can, keep the legs as straight as you can and make each rep harder than the last. Try and contract your abs that much harder each time. 10 seconds. Rest. So next up, you're just gonna switch the sides. You can just roll over if you like or switch over completely like I did. One arm out to stabilize, stretch all the way out, up, reach for the toes. Let's go. Again, notice there's that moment where I pause, squeeze and hold. Also notice where I've just got my hip in the air. This is the option where you bend your legs in towards your chest, but make sure those knees are coming as far in and out as you can. Stretch all the way out, crunch all the way in. Halfway there. 10 seconds. And again, just make each ab contraction harder than the last. Rest. Okay, round two on the single leg holds. You're gonna lie out nice and straight, arms straight above your head. 45 degree bend in the legs. And then you're just gonna crunch Let's in, go. hold on to the leg for a second or two, pause, squeeze the abs. Just a gentle hold of the legs, but focus on contracting your abs each time. This is just a good one to give your hip flexors a bit of a break, as well as keep the contractions going in the abs. Stretch all the way out. Crunch all the way and make the most important bit about this one is making sure the shoulder blades come up off the ground at the top. If it's just the arms moving and you're lying all the way back and your head's staying on the floor and your shoulder blades are staying seconds. on the floor, it means you're not going to be getting that contraction. You want to shorten that distance between the sternum and pelvis. Rest. Right, here we go then fourth and final move of the second circuit everything up at the top so start with your arms and legs nice and straight up in the air Let's go. then drop both arms and one leg up reach for the toes pause squeeze then drop the other leg trick is to still get those shoulder blades as high up off the ground as you can at the top Get maximum contraction at the top. Just drop one leg at a time as you drop your arms. If you get confused, start with everything at the top. Drop one leg as you drop both arms. Drop them down. Reach up, pour squeeze at the top. Then Ten drop the seconds. other leg as you drop the arms. Now just go, 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 go. All the way to the end. Try and not stop. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Rest. And finish there. Nice one, so we're just gonna go into some stretches now. So we're just gonna go arms and legs nice and straight as long as you can. Pull yourself as long as you can, as thin as you can. Suck that tummy in as hard as you can. You should feel a nice stretch in the abs. This is our pencil stretch. Next up, come on up onto your bum, cross your legs as if you're back in school. Walk your hands out. Try and drop your elbows down towards the floor whilst keeping your chest up. And then also try and push your knees down towards the floor. You should feel a nice stretch around your SI joint, which is where your spine 
meets your pelvis. Really good stretch to hit if you're sort of used to doing a kind of a job that involves a lot of sitting down because it stretches your hips and your lower back at the same time. So now you're going to straighten your legs out at a 45 degree angle, kind of like a teddy bear, and then reach down towards your toes. However, keeping your chest up nice and tall, and then even if you can't get to the toes, it doesn't matter. Okay, now let's go for your quad stretch. So just roll onto your side, heel to bum, try and push that hip nice and far forward. It's quite easy just to go through the motions on this stretch, but it's a really good stretch if you do it properly. So try and pull your knee back, get your heel touching your bum and try and push your hip out in front of the knee. Then just roll over onto the other side. Heel to bum, hip nice and far forward, pull the knee back, big stretch of the quads. Okay, next up, we're gonna go for child's pose. So feet together, knees apart, hands up nice and straight and together. So arms nice and straight, hands together at the top and just sink back towards your ankles. It's gonna stretch your hips, your lower back, the muscles underneath your armpits, your postural muscles, your lats. It's gonna open up your chest, stretch your shoulders, everything. Okay, it's a really good one. And it's a good postural stretch and good for just everywhere else. Then just a final one, hands to the base of the spine. Try and pull your elbows towards each other. Lift your chest, look up towards the sky or ceiling and stretch out your chest. Super important muscle to stretch off after press ups and things to maintain a good posture. But apart from that, if you have enjoyed that session today, I've got more coming like that, shorter versions as well. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps support me. Then just like, share, whatever. See you next time.